again to another episode of Footprints. Um, I'm your host, Mr. Davis. I'm an educator at BHS. And with me today is a senior, a guy who has been at Beverly High School for the last four years. This is Maverick Janess. And um, we're going to have a little conversation today about footprints, like who left a footprint on Maverick, and how is he going to kind of use those footprints to kind of move it forward in the world? And uh, we're going to begin with a question that I think people want to know. Uh, so can you tell us, give me a fun fact about yourself that uh, most people don't know about you. Um, other than like, you know, people like close friends with, uh, I'm an only child. Oh. So, I mean... It's That's like, interesting. Yeah, it brings a lot of like independence to my life, and okay. everyone's saying like, "Oh, you're lucky. You get spoiled." Like, I get bored <laughs> a lot, to be honest. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you say you get bored a lot. You don't have any special hobbies or anything you do. Um, I do. I play football and baseball both for the high school. Okay. And I also play um, baseball for the yeah, um, Beverly Salem Junior Legion. Oh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay. So, how'd you get involved with that? Um, so my grandfather, um, I don't know exactly what his role is, but he has a lot to do with post 331 in mm -hmm. Beverly. Okay. Um, so he convinced me to try out for Legion Ball, and I met the coach at the time. It's a different coach now mm -hmm. um, through Babe, the Babe Ruth League. So he kind of got me on that train, and, and I've loved it ever since, you know, representing. Wow. That's all right, yeah. man. I like that. Okay, yeah. we cool. We made the state tournament for the first time ever for the junior team. Oh, uh, man, that's that's an accomplishment right there. When you make yeah. a state tournament, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. oh, I appreciate uh, sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your personal growth as, as a high school student. So um, what has been like kind of your most memorable moment at the high school? That's a tough one. Um, you got a lot of them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Most memorable moment. I mean, I feel it was my first day of school. Mm. I mean, to be honest, like I was scared. I was excited. A lot of different emotions were going through. But I don't know, like looking back on it, like I've grown so much as like a person and a mm -hmm. student, like since then. I right. feel like, I don't know, that was just like the stepping stone into like a new part of life. So something brand new. I'm coming to the high school as a freshman. Boom. Mm -hmm. Here I am. And now... You know, it's we're four years later, and now you're leaving the high school, which is interesting, right? Yeah. We're going to get into that a little bit. Okay. Tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you kind of um, overcame um, that kind of shaped who you are as an individual. The big thing for me, and I'm sure it was for a lot of people too, was COVID. Mm. That kind of put me in a hole, like, mentally. I didn't have, like, the motivation that I mm. do today to, like, push through tasks. But um, I think... You know, joining the football team, like kind of learning that discipline also really helped me push through that. I love sports. That's mm -hmm. why I coach. I've been coaching basketball forever. Um, I coach for the Celtics, shameless plug, during the summertime. Um, but basketball and just sports in general gives you such like focus and discipline. And it's kind of like a microcosm of life, you know, where you have to kind of overcome certain things, right? Mm -hmm. You might be down and then you're up and then down and you're up again. So that's usually how it goes. So I really love sports and I'm, I'm glad you're a part of, of the sports at the BHS. Mm -hmm. um, what's one thing you wish you knew when you first started high school that you know now? Um, I wouldn't say it's something that I know, but it's more of a skill. Time mm -hmm. management. Uh, yeah, everyone tells you like, oh, you need to learn time management. You kind of just put it off. And it's like, yeah, that's a thing, but it, it really like makes an impact on like, I don't know, like your everyday life. Like when I do this, when I do that. Yeah. And it, you know, it helps you like build in that time for yourself too. That like, play video games, like play games, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, spend mm -hmm. time with your family and friends. Okay. Okay. So time management is actually a big thing. All of us really kind of struggle with that, including Mr. Davis sometimes. Yeah. Um, but it's really good to sort of focus and write things down and be like, okay, I'm going to apply this, you know, particular thing to this, and then I'll spend time doing that certain thing, and then I'll get it, I'll get it done. And you'll see time management is a big, big thing once you get out there in the real world. Yeah. Um, are you thinking about going to college? I am. All right. What are you thinking about going? Um, a few schools I like right now, I like Endicott just because it's local. Uh -huh. um, 
I like I just visited University University of New England over the weekend. Okay. And Syracuse is one. Wow. High Point University. Okay. So you know, All a few right. schools there. All right. What are you thinking of studying? Sports management. Sports management. We love it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. We need more of that stuff, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Um, let's think a little bit about some of the academics and extracurricular, extracurricular activities, hello, that you uh, actually have been involved in. So which class or teacher at BHS really influenced you the most and why? Um, I'd probably say statistics with Miss McDonald. Okay. Um, I took AP stats my junior year. And the class itself, like, I'm, like, a huge stats guy with sports to begin with. Like, mm-hmm. you name a player, what team they're on, <laughs> like, you know, I'll, yeah, love I'll that. probably know something about them. Oh, no doubt. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of what drove me to take that class. And, I mean, it's an AP class, so there's, like, there's a lot to it. A lot you have to study, a lot you have to learn. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the amount of work that was given. It was a reasonable amount of work, but I think it was fair. But, like, also going back to those time management skills, I had to use those skills to you know, build on and learn in that class. No, no doubt. So mm-hmm. it's interesting, too, because we're talking about analytics in sports. Yeah. And that's a huge thing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they talk about, like, well, if you take more three-point shots in basketball, you're probably going to win. And it's like, I come from an era where I played high school basketball and there was no three-point line. Yeah. So to me, that's kind of like backwards thinking. Mm-hmm. But analytically speaking, it's probably easier like to to score more obviously because it's three is worth more than two exactly right so people kind of get into that so i love statistics and all of that stuff it's pretty good Mm -hmm. not bad um let's talk a little bit about some of your future plans we touched on a little bit you said college so um you're gonna go to college and you're gonna study like you know analytics or whatever um what excites you the most about the next chapter in your life besides going to school what what's what's the most exciting thing you think for you the next chapter what are you thinking just probably being able to make an impact somewhere especially in the sports industry it's just such a huge booming industry Mm. that's growing Mm -hmm. and i feel like with my knowledge and like you know admiration of sports i feel like i can make an impact somewhere okay all right um what's interesting is sports is such a huge thing it galvanizes people right um i always say it doesn't matter what color you are they just want to know if you can play, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever sport it is, whether it be baseball, football, basketball, no matter what. And it's always, again, like I said earlier, a microcosm of life because it really gives you, like, focus and discipline and working together and all that stuff. And it's really important mm-hmm. when you're out here in the real world, believe me. Um, how do you see, what do you see yourself like maybe in the next five years or so? You know, you graduate from, from high school, you go to college. Where do you see yourself Doing. You did say you mentioned sports, but what do you see yourself specifically? What career do you see? What, what, what footprint do you think you're going to leave on the specific career that you're interested in? Um, well, there's a few like sort of careers that like you know I would be open to. One mm-hmm. would be like my own sports agency. I mean, mm-hmm. or like being a part of a sports agency. Okay. Um, but also like I would also want to be involved with some major sports team in one way or another. Where, I mean, even just behind the scenes, Mm -hmm. if I'm, like, able to leave, I'll go back to, like, leaving an impact, like, on that team and, like, benefit them in, like, one way or another, like, that would mean a lot to me. Wow. I mean, to to be part of some sports teams, like, I've been very blessed to be part of the Celtics for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. They won their title in 2008. That's when I started coaching with those guys, right, when they had Paul Pierce, KG, and Rondo, and Ray Allen, and all those guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. So when they won the title this year... It was even way better because I had more access. Obviously, I could see those guys, yeah. talk to those guys, you know, on a daily basis. And it just was wonderful to see the, the, the full circle moment of being there in 2008. And all of a sudden, man, I'm here in, in 2023, 2024, yeah. and here we are again. And it's, it's, a, it's a really, really cool thing. Yeah, I was yeah. watching my living room. It was a surreal, surreal feeling. Yeah. A Boston sports fan. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. See, I think we're a little bit spoiled with Boston sports, right? Because think about the Patriots and the success they've had for the last 20 years, right? With Tom Brady, right? We love him. And now he's moved on. And obviously the Patriots are kind of in the dumps at this moment. But, you know, it's all right. I mean, at some point it's going to turn. They're going to get the right people in there. They're going to make the right moves. They're going to have the right draft picks. They're going to do what they need to do. It just takes time. 
You know what I mean? That's all. It's what a rebuild is. It's not going to be great forever. You know, That's be it. ups and downs. <laughs> Without a doubt, just like life. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about um, what piece of advice would you give your younger self now that you've been through the high school already? You've been through four years, and now you're coming in. So what piece of advice would you give yourself right now coming in as a freshman, even though you're leaving now as a senior? What do you think you would say to yourself? That's, that's a hard one. I mean, don't just like look past like any opportunities given to you. I know that's more like a broad answer, but you know, there's been like stuff in life where like I've kind of just looked like, oh, like it's not a big deal if I don't do that or that doesn't happen. But like, really like the small things like that, those add up and mm -hmm. you know, just take advantage of what you can. No question. So um, <clears throat> like, I like the, the fact that you said that because Taking advantage of like a certain situation is like just like getting in where you fit in, basically, right? So, mm -hmm. if I have a skill set and I want to try to bring it to a certain area, I want to make sure I discover what company I can bring that skill set to, right? Mm -hmm. Like we talked about statistics earlier, and you want to get into sports, mm -hmm. definitely a big thing. So you always want to kind of just gravitate to what you love, because once you love it, that's going to be the end of it. I'll give you a quick story. So my dad used to say to me when I was younger. You know, people get up every day and they go to jobs that they really hate. You know, they, they have to go there they, and they hate it. And he goes, you got to find something that you get up and you get to do. So there's a difference between have to and get to. Mm -hmm. So if you have to do something, you really hate it. Like it's like eating vegetables. Your parents used to make you eat vegetables. Oh, I have to eat those. Yeah. It's terrible. But if you get to do something you actually love. That's the beauty of life, and that's where you have the. That's where you find those moments and and get in there, and you find those footprints that you're leaving on other people because you're happy with your life, right? And mm -hmm. you're doing something you love to do, and you're gonna translate those footprints to other people. Yeah. You know, every day we go through our, our walk of life, and we we meet people in our lives. Some come in there for a while, some kind of just for a little while, and everybody leaves a little bit of a footprint on us, mm -hmm. good, bad, or indifferent. And we kind of want to take those footprints and figure out what we're going to do with them and move them forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really kind of where it's, where it's at. Um, tell me about what life skill you think is most important as you prepare to graduate. Hmm. I mean, I'll go back to it. Time management, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the safe answer. But it's, you said time management for sure, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe right. it's important. It, it is very important, no question. Yeah. Um, because if you don't have that, if you, you like, with me, I'm a history teacher, so I always say with history, you got to know where you've been in order to know where you're going. So the same thing with time management. If you don't use it wisely enough, you're going to be like, oh, I'm out of time. You're know, always going to be rushing around to do certain things. Yeah. But you're right. That's, that's an important factor mm -hmm. in anything you do. Um, what are you most proud of um, as an accomplishment during your high school year? What are you most proud of? Um, so my sophomore year, like grades-wise, I mean – they weren't awful. I had A's and B's, but my GPA was in like the mid threes. But mm -hmm. um, last year, I like told myself like, you know what, lock in, do the best I can. That's like kind of like where I brought those time management skills to attention. Mm -hmm. And last year alone, I had a four four GPA, so I increased my GPA by a really good margin. So that's so. see, that's that's significant because when you think about it, my parents always used to say. You get out of it what you put into it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't put enough work into it, then you're not really going to get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. You decided, hey, I got an area that I'm, I'm, I really need to bring up. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to get it done. And now all of a sudden, boom, you bring your GPA up. And now you, you got that sense of accomplishment, which is awesome, yeah. right? Which leads me to my next question. Um, if you could go back and is it like anything that you would change or have done differently than you than you done so far in your life if you could go back in time I'm a freshman and I'm gonna go back would you do anything differently you think okay. um study for my SATs more <laughs> <laughs> um I think we all would do that yeah but for sure <laughs> honestly I think you know everything happens for a reason I believe you know God like chooses what happens mm -hmm. and what doesn't happen mm -hmm. you know gives us a certain path in our life so like I said everything just happens for a reason and no question it's gonna no question follow a path God draws. Me. So that's the thing. I, I always feel that too because I feel like, you know, I'm put here on, on earth to do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. Like this podcast sprung from a leadership class I taught last year. 
So always one good thing leads to another. And I like the connecting the dots that way. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. really kind of cool that way. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, um, how have your interests or goals changed since you started high school? What has really changed a little bit for you? I mean, I've always lived by sports, and I feel like that's always been my interest. But um, that's anything, a tough one. yeah, anything changed? Like besides just your interest in sports, have you decided? All right, I like sports, but I also like this too. Like, do you have something secondary that you would kind of look at and be like, I like sports, I'm going to put some energy into that, but I'm also going to do this as well. Like, have, it, have those interests changed at, at all in that way? Actually, an interest I've picked up on. It's really random. <laughs> it's okay. uh, weather. Meteorology. Oh, yeah. okay. So here's what I'm going to say to you. You know David Letterman, the late night show host. Mm -hmm. He's a host of a late night show. He's long since retired. Yeah. He was a weatherman in the beginning of his career, and then he... Be when switched over became a late night talk show host so mm -hmm. maybe that could be you you never know yeah potentially <laughs> you, decided to, you decided to get into you know meteorology or whatever mm -hmm. um so um let's look ahead a little bit because we talked a little bit about this as you're going through what are you most nervous about regarding the next step the next step what do you kind of what do you kind of uh, I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm going to figure it out. What, what are you nervous about as you graduate from BHS? I feel like, you know, it's all like, like the grown up stuff and like, like taxes, insurance, you know, like paying this, paying that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I'm actually taking personal finance course this year. And that's it's it's like the, you know, basic necessities, like what you learn in that class, but like learn uh -huh. how to write a check and okay, yeah. like bank accounts and all that stuff. But like, it's more useful than like people think. Cause oh, like, 100%. Yeah. It's definitely useful. Um, I'll tell you, I took a business math class when I was in high school and, and they, it was nothing like what I see the classes and the curriculum is set up for today. Mm -hmm. You know, like I didn't know how to balance a checkbook or anything like that when I got out of high school, I, I had no clue. And now we have the courses and things like that in, in the school that you can take some elective that now you can figure out, you know, how to do it. And I think that's really important as a life skill to be able to have that. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have that, like, you're just kind of flying blind, right? Or yeah. you're just like a boat with no rudder. You're just kind of out there hoping things work out. And then, you know, and my father used to say, hope is not a plan. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. kind of figure those things out. Um, this I actually already asked you, but I would, I would say... What advice would you give to younger students coming into the high school? Like, what advice would you give to the incoming freshmen um, that you kind of figured out for yourself and now you've kind of evolved into the senior that you are now? What advice would you give those guys? Um, it's like, don't be, like, scared or nervous about anything. Like, that transition from, like, middle um, elementary school to middle school, Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's, you know, it's a big step in, like, from middle school to high school, it's also, like, a big step, but, you know, in life, there's always going to be steps. Every year, there's going to be a step. Like, every grade, there's going to be a step. Like, it's really no different. It's just one, you know, small step in life. Everyone does it. There's no reason to be nervous or, like, you know, try to run away from it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I agree 100%. You're right. Every step of the way, there's always something that, that you have to kind of either overcome or get through. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things about just challenges in general is it reveals the character of the person you are. Some people give up just before it turns. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Keep fighting through it because you never know that next corner you turn, that's going to be the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We need to just have that diligent mindset to just keep going. You know, and I think that's really important for no matter what you're doing in life. Um, let me ask you this. What role do friends sort of play in your high school experience? I know you got a bunch of friends, yeah. you're a popular guy, right? So um, what role do those friends play in your high school experience or have they played in your high, high school experience? Um, I'll give you more of like a general answer of what I think. I think like friends, they influence a lot of decisions, you know, some good, some bad. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, they make like high school enjoyable. Like high school, it's not only to like, learn you know education obviously that's the main priority but like it learns helps you learn like those social skills and mm -hmm. it helps you like develop friendships yeah 
For sure. Yeah, and relationships. So, and, and it's important, too, because it's funny, the, the two guys I interviewed last week, they had been friends for since they were three years old, mm-hmm. and now they're high school seniors. So that's interesting that how their, their lives sort of parallel each other, and they still remained friends up until, you know, that day and, 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 and beyond. And it's interesting how that happens, that that synergistic relationship kind of gets going, yeah. you know? And I love it, too, because those two guys definitely made for each other, yeah. without a doubt. Um, talking about Seamus and Otis, ladies and gentlemen, you'll, you'll, you'll see. Um, what would be your dream vacation if you were to go any place? And who would you take with you? I just want to go to Hawaii. Hawaii? You got a nice Hawaiian shirt I on did. today, so was, that's that's good. Was today was beach theme. day. Was that's beach right. Theme. That's right. Um, I feel like I'd take like the people that are most important to me. My best friend Nick, he mm-hmm. lives um in Wakefield. We met through an AAU baseball team. Wow. Yep. Awesome. And I mean, my parents. I mean, they're the ones that deserve the vacation through okay. putting up with me. So. <laughs> So yeah. you take them. All right. So, yeah. so nice Hawaiian vacation, just chilling on the beach, doing your thing, mm-hmm. hanging out. Um, fun fact here. So my brother-in-law, Matt, actually, uh, him and his wife, Jessica, lived in Hawaii for a while. And he used to bartend. And he would bartend. And then Jimmy Buffett used to come into the bar and all these good, like mm-hmm. uh, famous people. It's pretty cool. But Hawaii is very expensive, what they say, because it's an island. They have to fly everything in. Yeah. So it's kind of nutty, you know. Um, but anyway, my dream vacation, I was thinking, like, where would I go? I'd like to go to Bora Bora. Like, mm-hmm. that's way out there. That's an island that that, yeah, is. with huts and tiki drinks and all kinds of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I would love to do that. That'd be fun um, for me. Um, and then maybe um, I would like, like, um, to go on. You know how they have these different, like, crazy, like, dream, like, vacations, meaning, like, you could spend, like, a, a day or a week with the Celtics and see how they are, like, you know, yeah. how they go and just hang out and see what their life is like where they're flying on a plane, they're getting off, they're going on a bus, they're going here. I'd love to do something like that. That'd be a dream vacation, too. That's it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I wouldn't mind that. A <clears throat> um, couple more questions. Mm-hmm. If you could have lunch with anybody, any historical figure, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ooh. Tough one. Yeah, because there's a lot of lot of good figures all through history when you think about it. I have two. I'll tell you my two after you tell me okay. yours. I mean, I feel like first the type of person that comes to mind is a sports player. There's I mean Tom Brady, he's the goat. <laughs> he's I mean, why not? I'm sure he has some good advice. <laughs> For sure, yeah. absolutely. Sit down with Tom Brady, have a little lunch and dinner and yeah. figure out what's going down, right? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you're right. He is the GOAT as far as quarterbacks go. There's no question about that. One of the greatest to ever play the game. And the thing is, you could see the drive he had being picked 199, right? Mm -hmm. Not really athletic, but just this heart and focus and really just to get it done, right, in the the face of adversity. You love a guy like that. Um, Mine would – my first one would be Kobe Bryant. I was thinking. I would want to know – from Kobe Bryant directly, if I sat down and had lunch or dinner with him, why did you think at 17 you could come into a men's league and dominate the men's league and change the face of the game the way you did or, or be one of the greatest players to ever play this game? What, did, what were we thinking? Because one year he told the story of when he was 13, he didn't score a basket all summer playing AAU basketball. He didn't score one basket. But then the next summer, his father's like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. He, he said, then he decided, I'm going to work tirelessly to get better. And that's what he did. He just worked and worked and worked. And then he was just this amazing player. Mm-hmm. You know, he also tapped into a great resource, Michael Jordan, who I believe, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest basketball player to ever touch a basketball. Some people, like LeBron James, they have recency bias, but I do not. Um, so anyway, I, I believe that he... Uh, Michael Jordan is one of the greatest players to ever play this game. So um, that would be one. So Kobe Bryant would be one of them. The other one I would want to have lunch or dinner with would mo- um, possibly be, um, well, it would be, is uh, Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. So when I was six years old, Martin Luther King got assassinated. So I was born in 1962. I'm 62 years old. So 
he had a profound impact on my life all my teenage years. So I would ask him as I sat down with him, why nonviolent? Why do you think that would work? Why do you think that would galvanize people and make them, you know, want to come together? I would want to know that specifically from him. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, what's interesting about him is he did that. You know, I, th I would say, why not fight fire with fire? But he did that nonviolent thing because he knew it was going to be like the thing that would impact the world the most. And now his footprint is huge on, on our world. Think about it. We got a Martin Luther King holiday. It's his birthday, right? Now everybody knows him in history, who he is. He, he was educated at Boston University right here in the, the wonderful state of Massachusetts. So th those, that's the guy that I would really want to talk to and sit and chat and be like, hey, listen, man, what's going down? What's up? What, why that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that would be it for me. Um, I'll tell you something. This has been a really enlightening conversation. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, I'm telling you right now, Maverick, you're going to do well in anything you get involved in. I can already tell you're from good stuff, right? And, um, and it's been great to actually have this conversation with you today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Mr. Davis, and uh, that's going to do it for us here at, uh, on, on uh, Footprints for, for this particular episode. But what we will do, ladies and gentlemen, is we will be back with you next week. And by the way, we're in our new studio, I love. Um, <clears throat> we'll be back with you next week with another guest, and we're going to talk some more about footprints that were left on that particular person and how they're kind of paying those and moving those forward in our world. Until then, I leave you with this question. What footprint are you going to leave on the world? Thank you. Thank you.